Let's look more closely at the idea that cellular automata are dynamical systems analogous to the logistic map. Well, here's a point-by-point -point comparison. In the logistic map, we have this equation where the value of x at t plus 1 is some function of the value of x at time t. And here's our familiar equation. Well, similarly, elementary CAs and other kinds of cellular automata, we have our state of the world, which is our lattice configuration of black and white cells. And the lattice configuration at time t plus 1 is a function of the lattice configuration at the previous time step. And here, this function is represented by the rule that's taking neighborhoods and updating the center cell. Both logistic map and elementary CAs are completely deterministic. There's no randomness involved. They both iterate in discrete time steps. In the logistic map, we have a continuous state. That is, the value of x is a real number, whereas in a cellular automaton, the lattice configuration is a discrete state. It's a sequence of black and white cells. The dynamics of the logistic map we saw went from fixed point to periodic to chaos. We saw all those kinds of dynamics. And similarly, in cellular automata, especially here the elementary cellular automata, we saw those same kinds of dynamics, fixed point, periodic, and chaos. In the logistic map, we had what's called the control parameter, r. That is, as we moved r from 0 to 4, we saw the dynamics of the system started out as fixed point, moved through periodic attractors, through a period doubling path all the way to chaos. Well, what's the control parameter for elementary or other cellular automata? It's clearly not the Wolfram number. The Wolfram number doesn't order the cellular automata in any order which corresponds to their behavior. It's arbitrary. So people started thinking about what would be a control parameter that would play the same role as R, where as you increase the value of the parameter, you go through these different kinds of dynamic behaviors. Chris Langton is a complex system scientist who worked on cellular automata extensively and came up with this idea called the lambda parameter as a proposed control parameter for cellular automata. For two-state cellular automata of the kind we've been looking at, that is, each cell is either black or white, Lambda is very simply defined as the fraction of the black output states in a rule table. So for example, given this rule table, we would count up in this column of output states, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 8 total. So lambda here is 5 eighths. So that's a really simple definition. But Langton was able to show that in some cases, the lambda value of a cellular automaton was a fairly good predictor of its behavior. Langton's hypothesis was that the typical behavior of cellular automata with a given lambda value would go along this scale from fixed point behavior at lower levels of lambda and as lambda is increased we would see periodic and then chaotic behavior. Of course because cellular automata have two states, white and black, they're symmetric in that, for example, a lambda of zero, which would mean all white fixed points, is basically equivalent behavior to that of a lambda of one, which is all black fixed points. So if you reverse the white and black colors in the update states, you get the same or equivalent behavior just with the colors reversed. This is a little different than R in that we have this symmetry. Langton did extensive simulations to test his hypothesis and found that lambda tends to be a better predictor of behavior for cellular automata that are not elementary, that is, those with neighborhood size greater than three cells. We're going to look at the relationship between lambda and cellular automaton behavior using an applet that was developed at the math departments of Hobart and William Smith Colleges. This link is also on the course materials page. On this page, 
you could launch the Edge of Chaos simulation. It's a Java applet. And it has some complicated options that you can use. To make it simple, I'm going to get a new world. I'm going to have the number of states be 2, that is black and white. I'll have the neighborhood size be 5. So each cell communicates with two cells on either side of it. So these are still one-dimensional cellular automata. We're going to say no. Rules are not isotropic. You can read about that in the website, but that just means that the, we're going to use the most general rules. The world is circular, and so on. OK, so we're going to create a world. And now what we can do is slide lambda using this slider. So when lambda is 0, this random initial configuration, which you can barely see here, always updates to white. Well, we can do the same thing by having a new random world. That just creates a new random initial con configuration and so on. So we can slide lambda up and see sort of how it changes. So here we have fixed point of all white, and we keep moving it slowly. Each time I do this, what the, the simulation does is picks a new cellular automaton that has this lambda value. Of course, there's more than one cellular automaton that has this lambda value, but it's picking one at random. All right, now I'm starting to get periodic behavior, and still periodic, but maybe a little more complicated. So I'm sliding this up, sliding, sliding. OK. Well, it, one interesting, perhaps more interesting and com good comparative thing is to have, let's see, um, start with one dot. So that's just starting with one cell uh, black. All right, so I keep going here. It's still getting this periodic. Now I'm getting something a little more complicated. Let's let that, well, this is starting to look a little bit more like a random or chaotic pattern. I move it a little bit further up and so on until I've moved it way to the middle. And now things are just looking really, really random. So you can play with this. And what Langton did was he, he implemented his own version of this and did extensive experiments by looking at random choices of cellular automata for various lambda values and found that lambda was a fair predictor of the t types of dynamics that you were likely to see. Now there might be certain initial configurations that give different behavior than other initial configurations with the same cellular automaton, but his concern was sort of on average the behavior. Well, I've been using the word chaos a little loosely here. To what extent is the random looking behavior that we see actually chaotic? Namely, does it have sensitive dependence on initial conditions? Well, Norman Packard investigated that. And what he did was he looked at different uh, cellular automata here with seven cell neighborhoods. That is, each cell looks at three neighbors on either side. For each lambda value, he tested a number of randomly selected cellular automata with that lambda value with a number of random initial conditions. And he computed the average difference spreading rate, which is a measure of sensitivity to initial conditions. Basically, you take the same cellular automaton, start it with two very close initial conditions, maybe one bit away from each other, one black cell turned to a white cell, and see how fast the two spread apart in behavior. There's a measure for that. He, met, he plotted this as a function of lambda, and he finds here you have very ordered behavior. Here you have kind of a transition to more chaotic behavior, and here you really have chaos with sensitive dependence on initial configurations. Indeed, you do get this kind of behavior that Langton hypothesized, Packard showed in his experiments. Packard called these regions the edge of chaos. That is, the place where things are not completely ordered, and yet they're not completely chaotic and random. And this corresponds roughly to Wolfram's class 4, that is, those interesting 
cellular automata with long-lived localized structures, such as in Rule 110. So in summary, cellular automata can be viewed as dynamical systems with different kinds of attractors, such as fixed point, periodic, chaotic, and what we might call the edge of chaos. And these correspond to Wolfram's four classes. Langton's lambda parameter is one proposed control parameter that roughly indicates what type of attractor to expect. Other people have proposed other control parameters related to lambda that do sometimes do a better job of predicting. The game of life is a class 4 cellular automaton. It has all the properties that Wolfram listed for class 4 cellular automaton. Now Wolfram hi hypothesized that class 4 cellular automata are capable of universal computation, which is something that I will talk about in the next subunit.